Hey, Chawsome Artists. This is Miss Sarah doing Art at Home. Today, the book I'm gonna to read to you is Mr. Seahorse by Eric Carl. I just love Eric Carl's illustrations. I think his use of color and materials is just brilliant. Mr. and Mrs. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea. Mrs. Seahorse began to wiggle and twist this way and that. It is time for me to lay my eggs, she said. Can I help? asked Mr. Seahorse. Oh, yes, thank you, said Mrs. Seahorse. And she laid her eggs into a pouch on Mr. Seahorse's belly. I'll take good care of the eggs, Mr. Seahorse promised. Now this is a fiction book because seahorses don't speak to each other in English with grammar. Um, but it is true that the female seahorse lays her eggs into the male's pouch and he carries them until their birth. As Mr. Seahorse gently drifted around and through the sea, he passed right by some trumpet fish hidden in a patch of reeds. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Stickleback? asked Mr. Seahorse. Delighted, said Mr. Snickleback. I just built a nest. And right away, Mrs. Stickleback laid her eggs in the nest. And now I am taking good care of them until they hatch. Keep up the good work, said Mr. Seahorse. And swam on his way. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a lionfish hidden behind a coral reef. See how their camouflage really works for them. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Tilapia? asked Mr. Seahorse. Mr. Tilapia couldn't answer. His mouth was full of eggs. I know, I know, said Mr. Seahorse. Mrs. Tilapia laid her eggs, and now you're taking good care of them until they hatch. Mr. Tilapia nodded his head. You must be very happy, said Mr. Seahorse, and he swam on his way. So again, true information, sticklebacks do make nests on their backs, and the females lay the eggs in them, and tilapias, uh, the male tilapia carries the eggs in his mouth until they hatch. As Mr. Sweet Seahorse swayed gently through the sea, he passed right by. Let's see what's hiding behind this seaweed today. A pair of leaf fish hidden among the seaweed. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Curtis? Asked Mr. Seahorse. Perfectly fine, replied Mr. Curtis. Mrs. Curtis laid her eggs and I have stuck them on my head. Now I'm taking good care of them until they hatch. You're doing a good job, said Mr. Seahorse, and he swam on his way. So there's the egg stuck to the Curtis's head. As Mr. Seahorse drifted gently through the sea, he passed right by a big rock, a stonefish hidden behind a rock. But before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Pipe? Asked Mr. Seahorse. Couldn't be better, replied Mr. Pipe. Mrs. Pipe laid her eggs along my belly, and now I'm taking good care of them until they hatch. You shall feel proud of yourself, said Mr. Seahorse, and he swam along his way. So there's Mr. Pipe's eggs. And boy, Mr. Seahorse is getting pretty, pretty big with babies there. Before long, Mr. Seahorse met another fish. How are you, Mr. Bullhead? Asked Mr. Seahorse. Tip top, replied Mr. Bullhead. Mrs. Bullhead laid her eggs and the eggs have hatched and now I'm babysitting. You're doing a fine job, said Mr. Seahorse and swam on his way. We usually think of females being the ones who do taking care of the babies in the old gender norms, um, but fish don't have those. The time had come for the seahorse babies to be born. 
Mr. Seahorse wiggled and twisted his this way and that, and at last the babies tumbled from Mr. Seahorse's pouch and swam away. One baby turned around and tried to come back into the pouch. Oh no, said Mr. Seahorse, I do love you, but now you are ready to be on your own. So here's the seahorse baby turning around to try and come back. The end. This story of Eric Carls reminded me of another story of Eric Carls, which was a little too long to read today. And that's um, a home, a house for hermit crab. And in this story, hermit crab has a very plain shell and he embellishes it. He adds things to it to make it more beautiful. So today we're gonna do some embellishment with buttons. So what you need today is something to embellish. I'm using a plain black pot holder. Um, they were two for a dollar at the dollar store. Um, but you could use a cap, a cloth hat. Please check with your grown-up about what you're allowed to be using for embellishment, both to work on and to work with. Uh, you'll also need a needle and thread. Check with your adult about what kind of needle. Um, I needed a pretty hard needle to go through this because it has quilting and it's got three layers. Um, if you're using something like this, you need a sharper needle. And if you're using something like a piece of fabric or um, a a fabric purse or a cap for your head, you might not need quite such a sharp needle. And some buttons. Now, I saw this lady on the internet talking about buttons. She was like, why are there always buttons at thrift stores? Who wants those? Me. I love getting buttons there. If I don't have enough because I use them a lot, I go to the thrift store and get more buttons. You can do so much stuff with them. You can sort them, you can count them, you can, um, sort them by colors and sizes and shapes. Um, you can hot glue them, you can glue them, and you can sew with them. So I mean, they're awesome. So I have put some into a, a shallow dish so that I can see the colors and shapes that I want a little bit easier. Okay. And then I'm just gonna start, some people like to start from the corner and move across or from the top and move down or making rows. Um, the one that I did for today is, is just sort of from small to big. I thought that would be fun. But I can also, I was thinking about doing like a small pattern of small flowers with a big flower in the middle. So a big button with buttons around it and then smaller buttons and then filling it up with like little white buttons, which I thought would be kind of cool. Okay, so um, you just make a knot in the end of your thread. You put it through the, place the button where you wanna go and then you push it from the back, push the needle through and go through the holes. Um, if there's four holes, I usually go twice so that each hole goes through. If there's only two holes, I just will go through once and then I move on to the next one. Okay. And then just keep going. I don't cut the thread, although you might want to make knots every so often, like every three or four um, buttons so that if the string does break, you won't lose all your buttons from it. Okay. And um, you might need a thimble. I didn't use a thimble because I don't have a thimble, um, but I did use a, a metal cup to push on the, the back of the needle if it was having trouble going through the fabric. And I ended up with um, an embellished pot holder that looks like this. So what would you do with that? Because you can't really pick up pots with it very much because it's kind of bulky. It makes an excellent hot pad. So I put it down on my table and if I have a hot dish or a hot pan that I want to move to a place and I don't want to hurt the counter, I put it on top of that. Uh, let's see what else you can embellish with it. See you next time.